One, two, three, uh. hey, what's up? Baby, let's go. That bittersweet feeling of remembering something unforgettable. People underestimate the power of nostalgia. Reminiscent of a time when the world ceased to move around you because you had it all. Reflecting on the so fetch and it's gracefully hilarious of the late 90s and 2000s. It's, it's your girls, Erin and Grace. Grace. Welcome to Nostalgic Nonsense. <laughs> So a lot of people know us from Illuminati's Pyramid, but they may not know our backstory. Yeah, I grew up in Nebraska here. I was born in Italy, but we moved here and I grew up in Bellevue, Nebraska, so. And I've been shipped around my whole life. Um, I was born in Texas and then I moved to Boston, Massachusetts, which I still love that place. And then I lived in New Jersey, but I'm mainly going to be talking about where I lived during the 2000s and that would be mainly New Jersey. So surprisingly, there are a lot of differences between the fashion, the s things going on, what we used to do when we were younger between the two places. So Aaron, do you wanna tell us a little bit of things that you did in Nebraska? So growing up in Nebraska, um, something we did to keep ourselves entertained was going to Skate City um, on Fridays and we would pull all-nighters there. We would drink monsters to keep ourselves awake and if you fell asleep at Skate City, they would spray you with water guns. What? So yeah, they this would not carnage. let you sleep. That's insane. So I grew up in New Jersey and being so close to New York, we, you know, we, we stepped up the bougie level. You know, you were expected to be a little more bougie, bougie, a little more glam. People were wearing a lot of juicy couture, but there was this town next to my town. I lived in Tewksbury, um, New Jersey. But next to our town was Califon, and in Califon's where all the skater boys were. And if you were cool, <laughs> you were going down to Califon with all your girlfriends and just walking around in circles and finding people on skateboards and just like ooing and aahing. Mm -hmm. And that's what we did. We, even though it was probably 2009, 2010, it felt very much like 90s grunge. People were listening to Lil Wayne. He was huge. I used to wear a shirt <laughs> to school that was my first boyfriend's that said, if you see the police, tell him free wheezy. <laughs> and yeah, I thought I was a little hard ass kid. But another thing we used to do was go on LimeWire. Anyone guilty of a Napster level crime? And illegally download music, as well as jailbreak our iPods, which Erin says she never did. But I, I ruined so many iPods with this. <laughs> I know that a lot of my friends did it, but I was like, no, I don't want to do that. But I, def Smart. I definitely would burn music off YouTube onto CDs. We had so many CDs that were just blank that we would just burn stuff yeah. on. I would make people CDs and stuff. It was fun. Yeah, you were like the prime person to burn CDs if your parents had a CD drive in mm -hmm. there. So I, I used to do that too, even up until high school, because a lot of my friends had uh, older cars. We did have a lot of things that we had similar. Both of us were early on the scene with the YouTube, <laughs> and we used to do dances. Uh, yeah, so we, we would make dances, like, especially after we went, like, to the movies and, like, it was, like, a musical or, like, there was just, like, dancing. We would always, like, mm -hmm. come up with a dance or there was a good song. We'd be like, oh, we have to make up a dance to that. And we would just go back home and record it on, like, the webcam like uh, yes. camera and it would be really bad quality <laughs> oh be yeah really crappy quality and we would just like make up a little like maybe like five minute dance routine and we thought it was so amazing camwow do you remember that i don't know camwow was like you know if you didn't have a platform for your uh webcam to record you would go on to camwow and they had like some effects and stuff that's what i used to do even if you look at my facebook today you can find a video of me dancing to down um, you know, it sounds like, baby, are you down? <laughs> that was a good one. That was the easy one to make up dance yeah. moves too, and I still remember it. No regrets there. And SpongeBob, which I found interesting because, oh, yeah. yeah, he's been around since 99, I think, and now he's a meme sensation. I think that's just people our age growing up and wanting to take something that's so iconic to anyone our age and like make it hilarious, like even more hilarious than the jokes already in SpongeBob yeah. are these memes surfacing right now. And I think we all realize too, now that we're older, like how dirty it was. Yeah, like I, I'm a go. Have you seen that one? That new meme where it's like, I, I'm a leave. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and it's SpongeBob, oh, it's everywhere on social media right now. 
but there you see but the fact all that the it was called like Bikini Bottom and like oh yeah the one where he was watching TV and there was like da, 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 and then he changes it to football when Gary walks in. Do you remember? That? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was weird. Something else is we both loved Desperate Housewives, and I have a funny story with this mm. one, but I'll let you tell your story. Who was your favorite? I can't remember their names, but the Lynette we got <laughs> the one with the red hair. Oh, that was... Because she was just so bitchy. <laughs> yes. Brie. Brie, yeah. Um, she was. Well, it's my, my parents loved to watch it. And so every time they watched it, I would hear them out in the living room. And I was like, oh my gosh, I want to watch it. So and so I would come out and be like, I had a bad dream. <laughs> and like, <laughs> I would just sit there and pretend like I was sleeping, but I was actually watching it. And so, like, I ended up watching like every episode. <laughs> oh my God, dude. I have some tea. Previously on Desperate Housewives. So back when I lived in Massachusetts, my mom, we lived on this neighborhood. It was like a nicer neighborhood and everybody knew everybody. And I'm not even joking right now. It was so much like Wisteria. But anyway, so she had, a, she had a meeting. Like she would, every Sunday, all the women in our neighborhood would come over and we, they would switch houses and watch Desperate Housewives together and drink wine and like eat shrimp cocktail. And it was so weird because I don't know why, but it's almost like these pe women who were coming into my house looked like them. And I would only be allowed to go watch if my uh, neighbor brought her daughter. But then I started sneaking in anyway. <laughs> oh my God, I thought it was just like the epitome of great cinema. I was like, oh. I know, me too. It was like, so good. It wasn't even, they didn't make it super soap opera-y. Like they made it seem real. And even in that neighborhood, there was like some scandal going on with the women who came. Apparently someone, this is literally sounds like the plot to an episode. Someone put a note in like someone's mailbox, one of my mom's friend's mailbox. It's like, I know you're having an affair and I'm going to tell everyone. Oh and my yeah, God. And this was something that was shared in Desperate Housewives. And I was just like, oh. The tea. <laughs> the tea. The tea was r piping hot. So we're going to go through some fashion icons that we both respected back in the day. So first of all, Kate Moss. She is skinny legend, of course, but she also really developed the grunge look and the messy hair don't care. Winona Ryder, she is also a very grungy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I love the way she, she carries herself. She was a huge herself. icon. And like even now, like she's still like. Oh, she still is. She's... <laughs> I honestly laugh that she plays a mom now because I don't ever, ever imagine her as being like a mother figure. I just imagine her as being like the manic, <laughs> manic pixie dream girl. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. What is your damage, Heather? And more fashion icon icons, we have Beyonce with the tinted frames, baby tees, braids, and bandanas. Yeah, bandanas were huge. I had so many bandanas. I'm pretty sure I still have a couple. I would tie them, you know, how you fold them in half and then mm -hmm. make it like a headband thing. Or I would make it like an actual headband, like fold it up a really? bunch of times. I had a fake one that was legit a headband. It was so knockoff. It was literally just a headband with half a bandana on it. My mom was always on that accessories. Like I, I remember one time we went to Costco and I got this big, Big container full of butterfly clips, barrettes, <laughs> hairbands, everything. And I literally lived off that container. I think it was like a thousand pieces. Oh my lord. Yeah. And I lived off of that my entire childhood. <laughs> Whatever was in there. I probably lost. I probably had like 400 left at the end because I remember those. They would break. It was bad. Uh, another person is Britney Spears. Oh yeah. She had the denim on denim. She also had the baby tees. Low rise jeans. Low rise flare, flare jeans. jeans. Janko jeans. Janko. Those she were didn't, huge. Did she wear Janko jeans? I know she did like that one hip hop segment segment in a song where she had some bigger jeans. Um, I think it was Hit Me Baby One yeah. More Time. Yep. I love her. Like she had like the bikini top. Oh, bikini tops were really big too. Yeah. That, that was, it's basically like the smaller the shirt and the bigger the pants, the hotter you were. Oh, for sure. You had to look like a legit triangle. <laughs> and then um, Backstreet Boys and NSYNC, they had, you know, for men's fashion, they had the frosted tips. And the Jinko jeans. Yeah, for sure. And, and big like jersey. Tanks. Tight, oh, tanks. Like tight tanks. White beaters. White be yeah. Mm -hmm. And they also had the tinted glasses, I remember. Guys yeah. would always wear those. And bucket hats. <laughs> bucket hats, yes. Denim bucket them. hats. We stand those. 
Next is the one, the only, the beautiful Paris Hilton. And she is just so iconic. We all know the simple life. We all know her quotes. That's so hot. That's hot. <laughs> Everything that she did just really was an epitome to of the era. People were copying her. She had her own merchandise everywhere. You everywhere you would go, you would see Paris Hilton stuff. You would mm -hmm. see her perfumes. She had a legit empire. Before the Kardashians, there was Paris Hilton. Yeah. She wore the juicy sweatpants and jean skirts. It was the Elle Woods aesthetic. Yeah, definitely the Elle Woods aesthetic, and I'm not sure which came first, but it, Paris Hilton either copied her or they copied Paris Hilton. So when it comes to Paris Hilton, she of course had her perfume lines and she also had her own TV show, The Simple Life, where that, that's basically iconic and the juicy tracksuits where I lived in New Jersey were the epitome of fashion. You had to have juicy tracksuits. And I remember there was this thing, it was called Rice's Flea Market. And you could go there and you could find $40. They were definitely fake. And they like to, they would just have like the juicy tags stitched on them. But you could get really cheap juicy tracksuits there. And I would go there and I felt like I was holding the deepest, darkest secret when I was wearing the fake ones. I was like, oh my God, everyone thinks it's, it's real. <laughs> it was the best. But then my brother's girlfriend gave me some hand-me-downs of her old ones and I started getting a good collection. I, It was really hard to let go of those. <laughs> like really hard. I bet I could still fit them if I still had them. Track suits and like juicy wasn't really like a thing in Nebraska, but definitely justice was a thing. Like That's so sad. We didn't even have justice. We had limited two, which is basically the same thing. It was an obsession. Like the cell phone lip glosses. I remember going mm -hmm. there and I would always get like a really tight tee with some words on it. I, I loved the color brown and blue. For some reason. Me too. Right? No, like was, the was skirts, like if your skirt was brown and like you had like a, a baby a blue, blue yes. top, it was so cute. Brown and blue were definitely the two colors that for me defined that era. I don't know why. Maybe it's because monkeys were brown and limited <laughs> yeah. two was that baby blue and color. Same, same with Justice. Justice, like they everything had monkeys on it. Like I thought the only difference thing. that I saw between Justice and limited two was that there were more monkeys at Justice and limited two was more. <laughs> frogs true but there were still frogs at justice wow that oh. too see it, it, it just keeps the plot keeps thickening we don't know uh, another one gwen stefani oh my god i almost forgot about her when we were going through people i who know would be, how could we how she was so she, iconic so yeah she brought she had the fishnets she had the mini buns you know like you do a bunch of the little space buns or she you know she was the e-girl before the e-girl became mm -hmm. a thing beanies chains Oh my gosh, I was just looking at it and I was like, why can't she still dress like this? Why did she have to age? We want this back. Yeah. But you know, now every girl looks like that. So. True. Yeah, and the chains totally made a comeback. Uh, speaking of, we're gonna talk about some things that have come back. So we've noticed a lot of bucket hats, whether that be Adidas, there's some like Blunts and Blondes, there's all these different brands, PacSun, Zoomies. Yeah, I have a bucket hat. Actually, it's a denim bucket hat. It's really cute. So, I had a bucket. I have a bucket hat that says Obey on it. <laughs> I don't know why I bought it. I actually, I do. I really wanted to finish off my gift card at Urban Outfitters, and I only had ten dollars on it, so I bought a ten dollar bucket hat. Love that. Uh, the Dior saddlebag. This is one of. This is just such a weird bag for, to come back. It has like this really weird, almost violin shape on it. And they were really big. They're making it right now. Well, Dior brought it back. So I don't know if it was asked for or if they just kind of brought it back, but it is so iconic. They came out with a matte black one. I was just looking at them the other day and I was like, could, but then you're like, do you want to spend a thousand dollars on a, on a fad? Mm, probably not. <laughs> but then like it did come back. So could it happen again? Who knows? Uh, another one is the share of teas. Yes, mommy. We love this trend. Yeah. When I went to, um, Oh, when I went to Lollapalooza this summer, um, everyone was wearing like cherub like tees or like dresses that had like the angelic babies on it. Like yeah. it was so cute. You see a lot of those mesh ones. I saw mm -hmm. this one yes. that's like a mesh top that has like the blue clouds and the babies on it. Yes, love it. Stand. No, one of my friends like wore a mesh like dress that had like a slip underneath it. Super cute. It was like 
uh, baby blue and everything. So yeah, and again, that That's baby another blue thing. color, that baby and blue dresses color. too. Slip dresses, of course, we love those. I'm trying to think of someone who's done it recently. Oh, even um, I think that. This is kind of old now, but Kendall Jenner copied Paris Hilton's look for her 21st birthday. And right. that was so iconic, like that. It's kind of like a slip dress, but it's like a diamond encrusted slip dress that you can't like move anyway. Like the super tiny. You, like. Yeah, definitely more for a Kendall Jenner size chest. But, you know, we stand, we'll watch other people who are gifted with that chest size wear it, but yeah. we cannot. Uh, another one is Velour. Now, velour I see come back more in accessories, like the bucket hat thing. A lot of velour bucket hats. I see a lot of velour on, um, what have you been seeing? I see some bags even, some velour bags. And oh my God, Juicy Couture. They, Juicy Couture used to come out with these <laughs> bucket bags that would have like all this writing on it. That Not bucket bags. They would come out with velour bags that would have writing on it that would be like, you are a juicy princess and this is your crown <laughs> like it would be like the most like self-centered yes the whole the whole brand of juicy couture was being a brat like it was total brats fashion for sure and from a person who grew up on brats i was on board like i did not mind no i love brats like dad sneakers so yeah, the Fila dad sneakers. Just give me a second on this one. I wanted to make that come back, okay? I really loved it. I was so about it. And then everyone started doing it. And I'm not a person who follows. I'm not a person who buys shoes because everyone else has them. And now I'm like, I miss that trend. But I have seen some really cool... Okay, if you're going to go for the dad sneakers trends, do not get the Filas. Just don't get They're them. They're so basic. They're so basic. I've seen a lot of... Tommy Hilfiger dupes. I've seen a lot of great brands trying to do better things, especially Balenciaga. If you have to put your money in some dad oh, sneakers, <laughs> Balenciaga is the way to go. Yeah. Do not be the girl who, with the feel of sneakers. I can't do it. I wanted them so bad until I saw girls with no fashion sense getting them. I don't know why. I just wish people were more pure with the way that they dress themselves. I wish it was less influenced by TikTok. Less, it, it, it should be a freedom of expression. It shouldn't be... Uh, a, a tool to fit in even if you aren't the person that you're making yourself oh, that doesn't make sense um another thing that is coming back is scrunchies this is more of a 90s trend me and Aaron both are wearing one today. yeah I have one on my in my hair right now <laughs> yeah definitely more of a practical thing to come back it doesn't hurt your hair I'm not upset with it yeah it doesn't hurt your wrist when you wear it it's mm -hmm. not cutting off circulation and it's cute it's like a fashion thing you can get ones like Halloween theme I have like a black cat one on right now and it's super cute yeah yeah, yeah. any corny like costume jewelry we love that we love corny we love I just want expression. I want people expressing themselves. I don't want one product to be universally like the it thing. I'd rather have a brand come out with a collection that goes off these styles for people to copy and make their own. I wish it wasn't just like, you must have these, uh, th this pair of sneakers with this brand, or you Fila, not. and they have to be white or else you're not really like a Tumblr girl. You know what I mean? Right, yeah. I wish it was more like, the aesthetic coming back rather than a product. Mm -hmm. So I think that it should, it's but great that But were Fila we, dad sneakers even like no. the thing? They weren't. Yeah, it was just dad sneakers. It was just, it was like, like um, it wasn't like a specific brand, right? I mean, it could have been Fila, but really what comes to mind to me is those like thick sketcher soles and like the, mm. the Nikes. Cause what are they called? Oh. One that I am totally on board with being back are, what are those white shoes, that, the Nike white shoes? Um, are they like dad sneaker type? Mm -hmm. No, not really. These. Ew. Platform shoes? These. These were cool. Air Force Ones. Yeah, Air Force Ones, I'm 100% with those being back. Those were actually from the decade, and they're cute. They're not going to go away. They're too basic. 
But when it comes to these Fila shoes, they went in really fast and I have a feeling they're gonna go out really fast. Yeah, also platform shoes are coming back. Oh yeah, I'm wearing platform shoes right now. I got my, f oh damn it, no I'm not. I was gonna say, what? I'm not, I'm wearing a really, really dirty pair of balls uh, of uh, superstars. Uh, and um, but she is wearing a choker. I am wearing a choker and I am wearing kind of like a 90s little poof sleeve, tight on the arm, a little bit. Um, grungy. Mesh, grungy. I, I'm all into the grungy style. That's why I love it, this podcast. I think it's going to be really fun because, you know, I just love the 90s. I wish that it was the 90s. I wish everyone wasn't on their phone so much. Yeah, that's something that we wish. So now let's go into like things that we wish would come back. But like... So I'm saying more analog. I wish that I saw more people with a notebook on them, taking notes, drawing their friends, maybe doing some like homework, brainstorming. I'm sick of people always taking notes on their phone. I, I don't know. Something is very beautiful about a pen and paper. Yeah, I think it's a lot more simple and easier to do, you know, too. Yeah, um, actually picking up phone calls, kind of miss that uh, too. Yeah, I hate that everyone just wants to text like... Mm -hmm. Or FaceTime. I understand that FaceTime is really cool, but also data, and um, I have to pay for that. <laughs> and I would rather you just call me. I don't know why. It's not even like people are looking at you when you're on FaceTime, too. People will literally be away from their phone with it pointed at the ceiling. Like, I know, and the, the audio point? is really crappy. Yeah, too. <laughs> and all the, the poor connection. Oh, my God. That We need Apple to do something about that. Another thing that I want to come back is rhinestone earrings. Yes, honey. Mm -hmm. The when you would go to Claire's and you would get the little like smiley face rhinestone earrings. Also rhinestones in general. Yeah. Like remember when everyone used to decorate their phone with rhinestones? Oh my gosh, yes. That or was like the those best. little charms that you could put on your phone. Yes. Like all the phones had like that little like loop. thing where you could loop where you could like loop in the charms. Oh, I yeah. loved that. I love decorating my phone. Me too. If you didn't have a decorated phone, you were not bougie. Yeah. That's I used I had this like um blue like slide phone. I don't even know what it was called, but it could slide up or sideways and like No. Yeah. I know what you're talking was it a chocolate i think so I and like it was like blue and LG i loved chocolate. it that was my favorite one it was yeah. an lg for, for for sure and like i would i had this charm on it that had like an e with like rhinestones oh my gosh see i remember there were three categories of phone there were multimedia phones basic phones and smartphones and my dad would always go you could only get a basic phone <laughs> and all those ones with like the cool features those were always the multimedia phones right and i would just be like oh but I had the intensity too, which is better than the flip phones that normally would go in the basic phone category. So I did look out. Uh, more things that we wish sh would come back is Indian alt music. So a lot of people like to criticize this era of music for their overuse of autotune. But there are plenty of bands that really made their mark in this decade. Like there's the White Stripes, we got Weezer, Blink-182, Arctic Monkeys, Queens of the Stone Age, Kings of Leon, Muse, Gorillas, The Strokes. Like, there is so much to talk about with indie music. And you don't hear that on the radio as much unless you're on a specific indie alternative channel. Mm -hmm. But these, these bands, they're still out there making music. Arcade Fire came out with an amazing album that I just love. If you ever want to listen to a song, hit me up. I can give you some rec recommendations. It's just great music. I love alternative. I love actually hearing instruments, actually hearing the voice. It's just totally different than all this poppy stuff that's been going viral lately. Any comments? Um, I don't know. I don't really pay attention to music that much. I mean, I like, like music, but... Um, we're going to go over some stuff that we are glad didn't come back or shouldn't come back. Uh, Monster oh. Energy drinks and stickers everywhere. The Kyles of the world. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, sin as I mentioned earlier, when we went to Skate City to keep ourselves awake, we would have Monster Energy drinks. And every time I went to school, too, I would have them in the morning. Like, I had an di addiction. Like, it was bad. And then there was also the trucker hats with, like, the Monster logos Von on Dutch. it. Just, oh, like, yeah. trucker hats in general. Mm -hmm. Like... <laughs> I remember that. Um, oh. And Napster and LimeWire. It's not that we don't want them back. Obviously, we want free music back. But there's just no way that those are going to come back in our the cybersecurity yeah. world. Unless, I'm not going to go into the other illegal ways you could do it. 
but uh, Napster and LimeWire dead. Jinko jeans, please God, keep them away. I don't like. I don't like it. You like can- I know that it's grungy, but it's like it. Like where are your legs? <laughs> like, your legs. You, they just look like they have you look like two traffic swimming. cones on their legs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then we uh, tying your shirts with a hair tie. Oh, Heck no. Do we that. both did this. We talked about this. Yeah. Just shoving like huge shirts. We were probably only eight. And you would just shove like you'd have this huge <laughs> tail <laughs> hanging off the side. Yeah. Like you couldn't you couldn't do anything or it would be like a bun. Like mm-hmm. you made it into like a little bun. Thing. Side bangs. Do you remember oh, side yes. bangs? Being seen was oh, so in. That can't come back. Side bangs, dude. I cut side bangs. Worst mistake of my life. I look like I had a curtain parting on half of my head. <laughs> it, it was dude, just a bad I wanted, look. I wanted to be seen so bad that... So I have naturally curly hair. I straightened my hair chemically when my hair was bleach blonde and it made my hair crunchy because I wanted <laughs> I no like I wouldn't put product in it and I'd get out of the shower and after it dried it would just be like shh, shh. like it was so oh, crunchy no. I ruined my hair I because ruined my hair when I was younger too by putting um lemon juice and sun in did you ever use oh sun yes in? of course that was my terrible. mom had me do it she was like here let's make your hair blonde it's it'll be so cute and like spray it in my oh hair. my god my mom screamed at me when she found out <laughs> I I get turned out being a little gingy it, it definitely went strawberry blonde, which does not fit me well. <laughs> but it smells. Oh yeah. my gosh, sun and smells so bad, and it ruins your hair. Mm-hmm. Another thing is painful ass headbands. Yeah. Uh, so me and Aaron, for some reason, both remember this type of headband <laughs> that had like teeth. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like you would just it was it metal would, like, headbands. like brush your hair. Like and it would just you go. Push it. You would shove it back into your scalp, like flaking up pieces of your scalp. Like it was just <laughs> terrible. It was a terrible, god awful headband. And boy bands, we don't like them. We like like the last big one was One Direction. Oh, yeah. what else is? Is there any other boy? Oh, there. Well, I guess there's all those. The um Korean J-pop. pop. Yeah. Korean pop. I guess those are okay, K-pop, but it's like that's what oh, it's K-pop. Called. Sorry. Oh, sorry, guys. <laughs> but yeah, I've never been into that. Tamagotchis. Heck no. I remember I had one. I named it Charles. And <laughs> it would wake me up in the middle of the night beeping because I had to eat it. Feed it. I didn't have to eat it. I could have eaten I was so upset that I almost did eat it. Um, <laughs> and la- oh my God, wait. There's one more thing I forgot to bring up for New Jersey. Okay. Ed Hardy. Oh, no. Ed Hardy was, was here huge. Too? Yeah. Oh my God. It was terrible. Anything Ed Hardy. My sister was obsessed with Ed Hardy. Like she had all the perfumes, like all the time. Like- Snooki. Snooki. I remember like a cousin from New Jersey. She made that really big and the poof. Oh yeah. The bump it. Oh, I had a bump it. I, I had did so not many. have a bump it. I had like the three different types of bump it, like the small, the medium <laughs> and the large. <laughs> And I would like tease my hair all the time and I would use that painful headband. So I would like, when my hair was chemically straightened, I would like straighten it and then I would like put the headband in and then the bump it and tease it and it looks so bad. Oh my God. And then I had like my tight air apostle shirt on. Dude, with, like, I would sweat so bad in those. Yeah. Can we just talk about Why how hard Why were they those- so thick? They were impossible to breathe. Like, I swear to God, I was so self-conscious in middle school because I Me thought too. I had a sweating problem. Nah, girl. I was wearing, like, every single day a different color of a <laughs> tight shirt that was totally unbreathable that would just suck to your armpits. <laughs> it was terrible, dude. I'd always be that kid, like, walking with my backpack on, sitting with my backpack on. <laughs> Could not Because if do you that. take it off, it's like, boom. <laughs> it's like, heck no, sweat. <laughs> terrible. Um, and low rise jeans. My favorite brand was yeah. Abercrombie. What'd you wear? Uh, American Eagle. I still wear American Eagle. I didn't, I don't know why, but American Eagle wasn't as big in New Jersey. It was more Abercrombie. And then as soon as Abercrombie Fab was done, it went straight to like Forever 21 and that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Which, rest in peace, Forever 21 is now ending the end of fast fashion. Another thing that I want to bring up is these if you ever want to get these styles like bucket hat cherub tees do our saddle bag color lenses velour you can do this in a very sustainable way you can just go to goodwill <laughs> because yeah. people who are buying all this fast fashion of stuff that definitely already existed are missing out on an opportunity to buy things that are more legit from the time period 
and much cheaper. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we encourage everybody to visit uh, sustainable places. Thrift especially stores. Especially like, yeah, Salvation Army, Goodwill, thrift stores. So Thrift world. Yeah, especially <laughs> the world we live in. We got to stay fashionable on our and watch the clock of our earth because our house is burning. You're right. All right, so that's it for this episode of Nostalgic Nonsense. Hope you guys enjoyed. Um, we're excited for the next one. We hope our nonsense has made you feel nostalgic. Don't let the Gen Zers kill your swag. And, and remember, remember, YOLO! YOLO.